Hello everyone, it's Doug McGuff coming from the echoey and cavernous chambers of Ultimate Exercise in Seneca, South Carolina. It's been a long time since I posted a YouTube video, um, but something's been rattling around in my head that I thought was worthwhile putting out and discussing. And this was triggered by some writing done by Al Coleman over at AutomatedMuscle.com. He's been generating a lot of interesting content lately. And this was um, regarding um, the central governor. And he was describing tolerance being the first adaptation that we have to have when we're training ourselves and training our clients. And this is predicated on the work of Timothy Noakes, PhD. He is a researcher out of Cape Town, South Africa, that originally came up with the idea of the central governor um, as the cause for fatigue in humans when they're exercising. Now, it was originally thought that muscular fatigue uh, or fatigue during physical exertion was occurring because of an accumulation of waste products, mainly lactic acid, that was changing the pH within the working muscle and causing its function to break down. But that notion was challenged when they began experimenting with training animals to fatigue where they would stop working, but then hook their muscles up to an electrical stimulus and lo and behold, the muscles could continue to function well beyond the point at which the animal reached volitional failure, um, which challenged the notion that this was going on in the muscle. What Timothy Noakes came up with was the idea that there was a central governor, which is something that exists in the brain and the central nervous system that generates for us a sensation of fatigue to get us to stop short of a level of exertion that would cause us harm. Now, Noakes felt that, that the harm that the central nervous system was trying to protect us from was actually just overexertion that would cause damage to the body, that we were protecting ourselves from overexerting, from overheating, from causing damage to our brain or damage to our muscles themselves. Somehow we were trying to keep a margin of safety for that. But as I thought more about that, and in my career in emergency medicine, I've seen many, many examples that defy that as the mechanism or the reason for the central governor. I've seen way too many people that have sustained heat stroke from exertion. I've seen way too many people um, training for the first time in a CrossFit box uh, develop rhabdomyolysis or football players during summer camp summer training camp that develop rhabdomyolysis. I see plenty of athletes that uh, tear a hamstring coming out of the sprint blocks or rupture an Achilles tendon playing basketball. The central governor is not protecting us from that kind of harm. And what Timothy Noakes um, describes our way of dealing with the central governor is we develop what's called a pacing strategy. And how we improve over time is adjusting our pacing strategy to be more efficient. One of the major things he offered up as evidence against the fatigue model that was originally proposed with lactic acid was how runners at the end of a race can have a last minute kick. At the point where they should have accumulated the most fatigue, they're able to generate the highest output. Um, and he attributes this to a pacing strategy that allows you to save your performance towards the end and that what allows the central governor to back off is the knowledge that there's an end point, that there is a point at which there is a finish line and the exertion is going to stop. Now let me back this up to my observation that I've seen too many people um, develop rhabdomyolysis, have a heart attack while exercising, develop heat stroke, um, to feel that the central governor is protecting us from overexertion. Instead, what I believe the central governor is protecting us from, literally, is inroad, from fatiguing the muscle to a degree to which we can no longer move under a given load or under a given circumstance. Because what I've always believed and why I believe that the training stimulus is inroad 
is that movement is our most preserved biologic function. Without movement, we can't get food and we can't keep from becoming food. So it's my belief that the central governor is actually protecting us from inroad. Whether you're running, lifting weights, doing calisthenics, the fatigue that develops is trying to protect us from inroading to a degree to which we no longer have movement. The problem is that the training protocol that we are using and the resistance that we're using and the time under load to a point of volitional fatigue that we're using is deliberately designed to um, foil any sort of pacing strategy. We're trying to accumulate fatigue as quickly as possible and to go as deeply as possible in the shortest amount of time. And that basically undermines any sort of pacing strategy and it undermines the notion of there being a finish line whereupon the central governor can back off us and let us perform a higher, higher level of exertion. Now, recently we have taken on some clients that have a really um, finely tuned or highly performing central governor. That is, their central governor expresses a very high degree of caution. And what Al Coleman Wright was, the first thing that we have to develop is to develop tolerance. Um, a tolerance for exertional discomfort and an ability to ratchet down the central governor so it's not so aggressive. And in clients that have a really aggressive expression of the central governor, what we have tried is setting them a finish line of setting a set duration of 90 seconds and then running them and allowing them to stop at 90 seconds regardless of whether they have reached failure or not and then building resistance over time until the window between 90 seconds and true failure is closing tighter and tighter and tighter. As long as a client that has a high expression of the central governor knows that there's a finish line, then they can kind of unclench from that central governor and go a little bit harder. Now, how this applies for someone that has trained their central governor um, to be less aggressive is what I believe Ken Hutchins described as the way to overcome the burn in the thighs during the leg press, which is when you feel that burning sensation and that discomfort, that instead of trying to run from it or hide from it, that you deliberately try to make it worse. And that when you do so, it tends to fade like a mirage. So for someone with a lower expression of the central governor or someone that's learned how to develop tolerance of discomfort, then those are the people that can go with no clear finish line in sight and actually take that discomfort and try to make it worse. But I think we are in the unique um, realm where we can actually identify that what the central governor is protecting us from is a level of inroad that causes us to be unable to move because that's the preserved biologic function. It's not protecting us from overexertion. It's not protecting us from muscle damage or muscle tears. It's not protecting us from hyperthermia or rhabdomyolysis. It's protecting us from inroad. And we have devised a protocol where we are trying to invoke the very thing that the central governor was built for, and we're doing it with a protocol that tries to subjugate and to mitigate against any sort of pacing strategy. So with those ideas in mind, I'm gonna leave it open to you guys in the comment section to think what is the best way to approach overcoming the effects of the central governor in a way that is most productive for the exercise stimulus. But just something to think about. But for right now, get off the internet and go do some dope shit in the real world. Until next time, Doug McGuff.